Hi everyone, it's Sarah Todd. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about what not to do when helping a disabled person and what you should do instead. The first thing that you should not do when helping a disabled person is don't continue offering to help the disabled person after they've told you that they don't need help. As I've said before, independence comes with self-worth. So it's really crucial that we make sure that us disabled people can be as independent as possible. And often there are some things that we do struggle to do on our own. So we do need people to help us with those things. So when there is something that we can do completely on our own, it makes us so happy when we can do something without help when we're constantly needing to ask other people for help all the time. So if there's a task that a disabled person doesn't need help with at all and they want to do it themselves, even if it looks like they're struggling, refrain from continuing to offer that help if the disabled person has said that they don't need your help. Of course, this can be difficult sometimes because if a task is taking a person longer or if they're doing it a different way than you might do it, you are going to want to offer your help because you know that the person might be struggling a bit. But even if a task takes us longer or even if we're struggling doing it, oftentimes we don't want help from other people because we want to be independent. So just try to refrain from offering over and over again because it's really important to preserve our independence. This next thing that you shouldn't do kind of goes along with the first one and that is don't help a disabled person when they didn't ask for your help. So this one can be a little tricky because it is easy to feel like a burden or feel bad if you are a disabled person who often has to ask your friends for help. And so sometimes it can be nice if you are with your friend and they know that you always need help with opening a certain food item and they just go ahead and do it for you because they know that you're going to ask them anyway and then it saves you the guilt that you might feel from having to ask them for help because then they've just done it for you without you needing to ask but i say that you shouldn't help a disabled person unless they ask you because if it's someone that you don't know really well they could be doing a task that just takes them longer or they might struggle a little bit, but eventually get it done, like I mentioned before. And so you don't want to just go help them because you would be hindering their ability to be independent, like I said. So it's just better if you don't know the person very well to just maybe wait a bit and let them ask. Or as I'm going to talk a little bit about more later, you can offer to help them and just say, you don't need to feel bad about needing my help. I'm happy to help but I want to let you do this on your own first. And then that kind of opens up the conversation. It gives the disabled person a chance to ask for help in an environment that feels a little more comfortable since now they know that you're open to helping them, but it also gives them the chance to be independent and try the task on their own. So all of that to say, this one is a tricky one, but I think you can kind of learn what's best for you and that particular friendship or relationship or whatever it might be. If you know the person better, you're eventually going to kind of learn what things they might need help with and what things they might not need help with. So then you'll better know what you should just go ahead and do for them or what they can do on their own. But if it's a new friend or just a colleague or an acquaintance, then I would advise you to not just go ahead and help the person and kind of give them a chance first to ask or maybe go ahead and say, what I said earlier about just telling them that you are happy to help them if they need help, but you also don't want to intrude. The third thing that you should not do when helping a disabled person is acting as if you're some kind of savior or super great person for helping a disabled person. You're not a savior or any super great person for helping a disabled person. You're just being a kind human being. If you're someone who would refuse to help a disabled person when they ask you for help, that is really bad and awful and mean. But if you are someone who does help a disabled person when they ask for it, or you know they need your help, you should not get praised for that. <laughs> we disabled people are people 
and we deserve to be treated like people. So there's no reason to have this weird praise going on for non-disabled people that help disabled people. It's just weird and it's condescending and it perpetuates the ableist idea that we disabled people are inferior and we're not human beings like everyone else. And yeah, this is just a bad one. You're sweet for helping a disabled person, but that's something you should do if they asked you for your help or if you know they need help with this task. So there shouldn't be any praise there. So don't act as if you're a savior or some super great person for helping a disabled person. That's really ableist. <laughs> the fourth thing that you should not do when helping a disabled person kind of goes along with the first two, but it's just on a larger scale. So with those, I talked about how it's not a good idea to just go ahead and help a disabled person just because you see them struggling to do something or you notice it's taking them a longer time to do something. But to add on to that, I also want to mention that you should not just go ahead and do literally everything for a disabled person just because they're disabled. If you just go ahead and complete every single task for a disabled person, you're taking away their independence completely. And there may be some things that a disabled person can do even if they need a lot of help with some things and you don't want to take that away so like for me i might need help opening certain foods but i might not need help with opening other foods and my family kind of knows which foods i need help opening and which foods i don't need help opening and it would really bother me if they just went ahead and opened a food item for me that they know I can open because then I don't have that chance to be independent. So I just advise non-disabled people who are helping disabled people to try not to just go ahead and do every little thing for the disabled person. It's condescending, it insinuates that you don't think they're capable of doing things, and it takes away their independence. So just not a good idea at all. I've had this happen to me and I dislike when it happens. I do always try to remember that the person is coming from a good place and they really are just trying to be helpful and that's so sweet and it's really nice that they want to be helpful, but it does kind of cause some problems there. So it's best to just be respectful in that area and try not to help the disabled person with literally everything because you want to respect that they will want as much independence as possible. Okay, the fifth and final thing that you should not do when helping disabled people is don't make them feel guilty for asking for or needing your help. It can be really difficult needing to ask people for help or just not even having to ask and knowing that your friend knows you always need help with opening some certain food item and they do it for you without having to ask. It can still make you feel guilty because people are constantly doing things for you. Even if these tasks are small and it's not a big deal at all to help with them, it can make us feel guilty for needing help. So you don't want to add on to that by really purposely making us feel guilty for asking for or needing your help. This is a pretty rare one. For me, I've never really had anyone intentionally make me feel guilty for asking for or needing help, but it can happen. An example of this could be if I need help brushing my hair and I ask a friend and they sigh or they are like, oh, okay, or something like that. It can just kind of make you feel a little more guilty and you don't have to act super enthusiastic or anything or like oh my gosh of course i'll brush your hair but just me being like oh sure or something is a lot better than like oh, okay or something like that you just don't want to ever make the person feel bad because trust me we would all much rather be able to do these things for ourselves too we don't want to have to ask people so when we are asking we really do need the help because we try to avoid asking as much as possible. So just try to not make us feel guilty. Like I said, this doesn't really happen that often to me, but it can happen. 
All right, now that I've covered the five things that you shouldn't do when helping disabled people, I'm going to give you all a little bit of advice on things that you should do when helping disabled people. I've talked about these things a little bit as I've covered the things that you shouldn't do, but I just want to go a little bit more in depth so that you can make use of these tips if you ever need to. And I also believe that it's really good if we're telling someone not to do something to try to give them something to do instead so people know what they should try to avoid doing, but they also have an alternative of something they know is a good thing to do. The first thing is something I've mentioned throughout this video, which is if you aren't really friends with a disabled person yet, maybe you don't know them very well, they're just an acquaintance, a colleague, someone in your class, instead of just jumping right in there and helping the disabled person with a task, if you notice they're struggling or if you notice it's taking them a longer time to do something, you could just say something along the lines of, I just wanna let you know that I'm open to helping you and you don't need to feel bad if you need help, but I also want to give you your independence and let you do things on your own if that's what you wanna do. But I just wanted to let you know I'm open to helping you and it wouldn't bother me at all or just something along those lines. These conversations can be really tricky because every relationship friendship is different and every disabled person has their own preferences for what they prefer when it comes to asking for and needing help so it's always difficult but i feel like this is a good solution for a lot of these situations i feel like for me personally i would really appreciate it if this is how an acquaintance of mine handled something like this so if i were in this situation and i were trying to open a food package that I normally can open and it's just taking me a bit and that's how it always is and I'm used to that but my acquaintance doesn't realize that I think I would really love it if they said something along those lines of just being like hey like don't feel bad if you need to ask me for help but I want to respect your independence and totally like do your own thing but I just want to let you know if you need my help it won't bother me and you can totally ask I think I would really like that, but some other disabled people might not like that. So you never really know, and that's what makes these situations just so difficult, but I think that could be a good solution. Now, the best thing that I think someone could do when helping a disabled person is something that one of my best friends did when I first started getting to know her at college last year. She's now like literally one of my best friends and this shocked me. I was so happy that she did this. We'd gotten to know each other a bit. She knew that I have a disability and all of that. And we were just eating lunch one day and she asked me if I preferred to have her let me go ahead and try doing things on my own and just do that and then ask her myself when I needed help or if I preferred for her to just go ahead and help me with things and I was like that is so sweet that you thought to ask me that and I think that is a great thing for a non-disabled person to ask their disabled friend you kind of want to be at the point in the friendship or the relationship or whatever it might be where you have gotten to know each other decently well though because a question like that kind of insinuates that you know you're going to be spending a good amount of time with this person and this is just a helpful thing for you to know so that you can respect the disabled person's wishes. So this would be kind of an odd question to ask someone you're only gonna see like once in your life. So I think this is something better to ask someone that you are starting to get to know a little bit better and know you'll spend a good amount of time with, which was exactly our situation. She asked it at like the perfect time in our friendship development and I so appreciated that. And I told her that for me, it's a little bit tricky. I ended up just kind of saying that there are some things that I know I need help with and I would love it if once she got to know me better, if she just helped me with those things, if she didn't mind helping me and then I wouldn't have to ask. But I also told her that there are some things that I do wanna try doing on my own and I might not know if I can do them on my own or not. So I would prefer for her to wait 
until I asked her to help me. And that there are also going to be some times where there are some things I typically can do by myself and for some reason that one day I couldn't. And so I have to ask her for help with those things. So I told her it could be a little bit tricky with me, but that's kind of what I explained to her. And that's worked really well for us. She waits until I ask her for help for many things. But if it's something she knows I need help with, she just kind of goes ahead and does that for me. And it's great because I don't have to feel like guilty for asking her for help so much. And it just demonstrates how well she knows me and that she is respecting my independence. And I love that. So that was literally amazing of her to ask me that question. I think more non-disabled people should start doing that. It just made me feel really respected and like she really cared about me and she does. So I really loved that she did that. So yeah, those are five things that you should not do when helping a disabled person. And then two suggestions for what you could do when helping a disabled person. I hope that this was helpful for you all. I think having these conversations is so important. It's really good for us to try to give non-disabled people advice for how to handle these situations because they can be really tricky. And these situations are made even more complicated by the fact that every disabled person has their own preferences, as I've said before. So there really is no just one correct answer for this whole thing. But all of that was just my whole opinion on stuff that you shouldn't do and stuff that could be good to do in these situations. So hopefully that will help some of you all in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, and remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss a video of mine. Also, be sure to follow me on social media. The links are in the description box below. And in the description box, you can also find links to my Patreon and where to buy my books. And I would really like to, again, thank all of my existing patrons and everyone who's bought my books so far. You all are amazing and I appreciate you all so much. And finally, remember that I post new videos every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern and sometimes Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I hope to see you all at the next one. Bye, everyone.